Hello, and welcome to A Really Brad Week, starring Brad Leonard with me, Brad Leonard. It's a show where I talk about things in the news and media and junk and just kind of riff on them a little bit. Thank you so much for joining me this week. Let's get right into it. So, like, the Emmys are postponed, rightfully so, due to the ongoing writer's strike. However, I still think that most of my favorite noteworthy programming of 2023 deserve the recognition and flowers that I think they deserve. So, with that being said, here are my Emmy winners for 2023. All right, now for outstanding drama, it's gotta go to Succession. It's a very funny and quotable show, despite it being a drama. It should have been a comedy, in my opinion, but it just ended its run, and I think it deserves one final acknowledgement. Uh, the Roy family should go down in history, along with the Jeffersons, the Flintstones, and the Seinfelds. Outstanding comedy series, Abbott Elementary. It's simply the best sitcom on TV right now, period. Quinta knocked it out of the park her first season, and she managed to dodge what I like to call the second season curse, which is when a show is already relying on reoccurring jokes, storylines, and phrases from yester season when the show can then just start to feel very repetitive. Nothing but respect for that. Congratulations, Abbott Elementary. The Bear came as a close second for me. I honestly didn't realize it was categorized as a comedy. To me, it's more of a stress test. Lead actor in a drama is going to Jeremy Strong. Now, he may not be the eldest nominee, but of all of the ones that I did watch this season, I'd say his performance stood out the most to me. Lead actress in a drama, again, succession, we're going to Sarah Snook. Shiv's reaction to the eldest boy comment, it was the most realistic thing I've seen on television in decades. Lead actor in anthology or movie, I'm giving to Mr. Daniel Radcliffe. He deserves a W, but I think also Roku deserves that W. Supporting actor in a drama series, I'm giving to Nicholas Braun of Succession for his role as Cousin Greg. Now, the reason I want to give yet another award to Succession is that Cousin Greg, I think, is very special. We either all know a Cousin Greg or we are a Cousin Greg, and I think that kind of representation on television matters. Supporting actress, I'm giving to Jennifer Coolidge for The White Lotus. I've not watched White Lotus, I've heard amazing things, but it's no secret that she's been killing it with that show lately, so let's just give it to her now, shall we? Lead actress in a comedy is going to Astina Crit... Ast... Christina Applegate for Dead to Me. Now, I binged Dead to Me earlier this year on Netflix, and I must say it was a very wonderful time. Cannot recommend the show enough. Great show, great cast, and I'm not just saying that because I'm slightly biased because I love the show Married with Children. Supporting actor for a comedy goes to Mr. Henry Winkler for his role in Barry. His work on that show has been his finest in his career, in my opinion, and the final season specifically is top-notch Henry Winkler. Well-deserved. It's the kind of acting that makes you go, oh, wow. Supporting actress in a comedy is going to Io Idebari. Io is honestly the moment right now, so it's just best to acknowledge it now. She's killed it in the bear the last couple seasons as Sydney in such a honest and real performance. Honorary mention to Janelle James for Abbott Elementary. Lead actor in a comedy, Bill Hader. It's his best role since Stefan, period. Supporting actor in an anthology or movie, I'm giving to Paul Walter Hauser of Cobra Kai. Now, I know he's nominated for Blackbird, and I hear he plays a very great crazy person in that, and... That's great, but he stole my heart as Stingray, so I'm going to give him the Emmy for both of them. Congratulations, Paul. Supporting actress in an anthology or movie, Annalie Ashford for Welcome to Chippendales. Now, I have not seen Welcome to Chippendales streaming on Hulu, but I have seen Sweeney Todd on Broadway, and she got robbed of that Tony, so this is my making up for the Tony Academy. You're welcome, Annalie. And for best sketch series, I'm going Black Lady Sketch Show. It ended with a great run, and let's be honest, SNL has enough. They can set out a season. Manchild Logan Paul walked out of a screening of Oppenheimer recently because a movie without car chases and titties couldn't keep his attention span for more than three hours. There was titties in Oppenheimer. You said what? There was titties in Oppenheimer. There was? There was. I gotta see Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, Manchild Logan Paul walked out of a screening of Oppenheimer because a movie without car chases and talking animals couldn't hold his attention span for more than 90 minutes. He said in a recent podcast that it all felt like exposition and nothing happened and it's just 90 minutes of talking. First of all, dipshit, it's three hours of talking and a little bit of titty. B, it's a period piece that takes place in the 1940s. The most exciting thing going on at that time, besides having polio, was either being in a war or dying in a war. Otherwise, it's a pretty boring time to be alive, so all you can really do is talk. And lastly, if long-term talking isn't an ideal format of entertainment, then why the fuck do you have a podcast? Both Oppenheimer and Impulsive have the same thing going for them. It's just a bunch of white dudes talking about shit that's going over my head because 
To me, it's nonsense. The major difference is that one of these things is a piece of cinema written about some of the greatest minds in our history, and the other is a circle jerk hosted by the first boy man to monetize being annoying and dodge paying American taxes doing so. Disney is launching a podcast called Frozen, Forces of Nature, which takes place right after Frozen 2 to mull over the anticipation for their third installment of that franchise. Disney said that they will be using some of their other properties to explore this new avenue with titles such as The Lion King, Cars, The Little Mermaid, Toy Story. Now, since these podcasts are going to serve as sort of sequels to their beloved properties, I'd like to see them dive into other, more bolder territories with their podcasting ventures. Here are some podcast ideas that Disney should take advantage of. A true crime podcast uncovering the murders at the Haunted Mansion. A movie recap podcast hosted by Max Goof and his stoner friends where they also rate pizza. Duck Pods, a DuckTales rewatch podcast starring Huey, Dewey, and Louie. A trauma recovery podcast where Belle from Beauty and the Beast interviews her staff who used to be household items and unpack their trauma. I'm sure the person who was a toilet brush went through hell. Confessions of a Middle-Aged Trauma Queen, a podcast hosted by Lindsay Lohan's character where she discusses the angst of moving from New York and the heavy trauma she felt after leading a big high school production. One time. A podcast where the seven dwarves just talk over each other. Dopey can be the producer who chimes in sometimes. Recession where TJ and his friends from Recess all sit down and discuss the woes of being a broke millennial living at home. Chippendales Rescue Recap. Chippendales relive their wildest adventures and share thrilling and sometimes sexy behind-the-scenes stories. Let me know what you think Disney should make a podcast about. That's all I got for you this week on A Really Brad Week, starring Brad Leonard with me. Brad Leonard. Thank you all so much for joining me this week. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, check out other content on this channel, and I will see your ass next week.